All right, guys, welcome back to another Q&A session. My chat gets to ask me anything live and I will answer it if I feel like it. Although too many weekly dropped, can we expect another gauntlet? So it's November. We have, you know, roughly seven to eight weeks until, you know, this season of anime is done. And if there wasn't any other projects that I was thinking about, we could definitely um, do more of another gauntlet series. But this is a bit different this time because I need to get Apothecary's Diaries getting started soon. And because of that, I'll most likely just stick with Spirit Chronicles and see how that performs, then rotate in Apothecary Diaries. And we're also reaching the end of Assassination Classroom by the end of November. So maybe sometime in December, there will be like another slot available for like a gauntlet series. But um. I don't think there's too many other animes that people are really wanting for us to check out. It's honestly the Gauntlet series are just a bunch of leftovers, right? That we didn't really check out in the beginning. So, um, no promises, but there is potential. But yeah, we'll be definitely prioritizing uh, Apothecary Diaries, though. What's my inspiration to start YouTube and the motivation that drives me? Have you seen how expensive it is to live these days? <laughs> You know, the average bedroom in Vancouver going for like an average of like, what, 2,000 plus dollars, like 3,000? The inspiration to start YouTube starts from its necessity to survive in society. As I'm working my fucking... I've always thought about like, can I actually do content creation? I think that I'm a pretty witty person and have the personality to entertain, but what's the odds that I could actually do it successfully? That's why I never tried it until I did my day job as a full-time software engineer and then due to that boredom and lack of fulfillment, I decided to monetize a hobby. And ever since then, it just felt like it's a good feeling when you know that the amount of effort you put in, you get rewarded back proportionately. Once you get a big boy job, you realize that there's really no fulfillment. You can't tell me that like you actually if money wasn't an issue, most motherfuckers would never do their job. We're all doing it because obviously you need the money. Now, if your skills and the whatever thing that you're doing is something that you actually do enjoy, then great. That's fine, right? I'm not saying there's like an inherent problem of people working a nine to five, but you also can't really tell me that, again, if the construct of money wasn't a thing, would you actually do what you're doing through nine to five? Most likely not, right? So it's this nice feeling of knowing that I can do something that I enjoy, the amount of work that I put in, I get rewarded proportionally rather than me just fucking around at work. And, you know, the more that you put in, the more responses you're given and without, you know, same pay. The monetary aspect too, the earning potential is much higher during content creation than working a day job. And the motivation is simple. It's fun to do this shit. And it's really fun to see the numbers grow and grow. It's a very addicting feeling as you see the actual growth happening it went from, oh shit, you know, some, we're making a couple hundred bucks and I can buy some, you know, some, you know, I can, I don't know, go to a nice restaurant or buy some cool toys here and there with those little pocket chains I'm making with content creation. But at a certain point, it's just like, holy shit, I can actually pay rent now. And then it's like, holy shit, I can pay my editor and pay my bills and get it going. Like, it, it's a really addicting feeling of growing the numbers. And that's pretty much the motivation that drives me. It's, it's nice to know that what I do, I do well, and it's received well. And the community I create, and the more fun we can have, and the more fun we have, the more money we make. It's just this repeating cycle. That's why it's so easy to stream every day. Do I diet these days? I wouldn't say I diet, but I have like a goal to hit like, you know, 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight. I'm not like, I'm trying to honestly just eat in surplus so I can like build more muscle, but I'm not really like dieting to lose weight or something. If I want to watch any previous show from any genre, which would I start watching? Why? Uh, assuming that you're asking what show would I want to watch if, you know, I could just like erase it from my memories. Probably start with like Naruto or some shit. I don't know. Some big battle shonen. What's my thoughts on the meltdowns from the presidential election? I think that the meltdowns of many people, a lot of liberals, a lot of left-leaning people, they're just calling Donald Trump Hitler and saying it's the end of the world, Project 2025, oh my god, our abortion rights, our entire, like, 
reason for existing, it's gone. You failed women. Now, there is some partial truth to that for sure, right? Regarding the whole Roe v. Wade debacle that was happening when Jay Trump was in office. But I think it's also so overblown and it truly shows the delusion and the ridiculousness of the Democrats and trying to like paint like, come on, it's gonna win this thing. Wow, so much fucking hype. But everyone can tell it's fucking bullshit, right? And then you delude your voter base into thinking, if you don't vote for Kamala, then the end of the world is happening. And that's why you see the meltdowns. Like, your day-to-day -day lives most likely won't be impacted. If a bill was actually signed to ban abortions and shit everywhere, for sure, that is something to be very upset at and you should stand against that. However, for the most part, most motherfuckers are so terminally online and they're just given what they're given by the mass media. And they think that it's literally the end of the world. It's, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. Now, there is some truth of like, okay, Trump's in office. And now because of, uh, I, I think that like conservatives hold power in all three structures, meaning like he can appoint more like Supreme Court justices and stuff. And because when you bring them in at a young age, they're going to last throughout their lifetime, for sure. The impacts that Trump has going on office is going to last for our lifespan. But at the same time, those meltdowns are so stupid. Stupid. It truly shows that people are so caught up in like identity politics and culture wars. They don't fundamentally understand what the average person is going through. They don't understand that like people don't care about your fucking social issue. They just want to make sure that they can actually buy their groceries and pay their bills and be able to fucking live. And there's only one person that's actually kind of saying they'll do that thing. Will Trump actually do it? Who knows, right? He's not going to fucking make, you know, chickens free now. No, that's not going to happen. But it's just so clear if you're objectively viewing this without being so consumed by identity politics that the average person sees that Trump is an asshole but speaks from the heart and Kamala is too scared to even go on the fucking Joe Rogan podcast. And you're going to say, what a stupid thing, Joe Rogan podcast. A lot of people are stupid. And those podcasts, Trump into Vance into Elon, Say what you will about them. They actually went on to have a genuine conversation. That's something that the Democrats could never fucking do. And it's just so, so annoying that the, this is like our best option. Like, there should be way better options. But I fucking hate the Democrats so much because they're just a bunch of fucking loser cucks. They have no idea why they keep on losing. And then you have the Republicans who are just so good at their messaging. And even if you don't agree with everything, you can see why people will vote them into office out of frustration. Do I think that Crunchyroll Anime Rewards this year should be decided by judges or by the votes of the fans? It should be democratic process by the fans, right? By anime consumers. If I could completely forget about a show that I could experience it a second time from scratch, what show would I choose? Maybe One Piece? Attack on Titan was fucking crazy though, right? Attack on Titan reveals are fucking absolute bazongas, right? But some long-running show with a lot of twists, like maybe One Piece. Stuff that we're... Stuff that we are not allowed to ask and stuff that we are allowed to ask. It's going to be talked. Just don't fucking ask when are we going to watch this or if you watch something. That's the only thing. If I had no other means of income acquisition, how would my anime reaction earnings have to go before you resort to OnlyFans or selling bathwater? Well, you're assuming that there is no money being made from anime re What does that mean, though? That means, like, at what point of content creation failure would I have to resort to OnlyFans? I don't think I'd ever do that. It's also not like- I mean, but this is like a hypothetical, right? Only want me to find out. If there was a manga for me to start with, what would I start with? I don't really read manga though, because of anime reactions. But uh, maybe again, it'd probably be like One Piece or some shit, something long running that I could enjoy for a long time. If demands are high enough, would I would light novel reactions be possible? Yeah, I think that we could probably like, if let's say Classroom of the Elite light novel audiobook reactions were hype. And people actually enjoy that. And every video I could, you know, upload, like, let's say I could do a dedicate like a one hour recording session per day to that and upload that to YouTube. And that actually got a lot of views. Yeah, I could get into it. Has there been a time where I forgot to record what I'm reacting to an episode content midway? No, because I had to click record to actually, you know, start the whole thing. And I'm always looking at OBS. So there hasn't been a moment like that. 
There has been a moment a long time ago, though, in my first channel where the mic wasn't fucking connected and I was talking the entire time and it just, it was fucking stupid. That's definitely happened. Anime surprises of this fall 2024 season? I didn't expect Danmachi to be this good. Blue Lock was kind of a shock in terms of how shitty it's doing. Orb was really cool. The setting is so different and it was such a unique story, but unfortunately most monkeys don't care about Orb, so it's kind of dead. Danda Don had a lot of hype building up to it. So I guess it's not really a surprise, right? If there was no advertisement of Dan Dan and it did this well, then I'd be shocked, but it's kind of obvious that it's doing this well. Is there anything else? Not really. Nothing really... There was not... There's no, like, completely random show that just showed up and just, like, blew my mind. If I got isekai but I could choose what world I got sent to, it's Konosuba. It's Konosuba easy, and I would probably avoid, like, I don't know, like, most Isekai worlds fucking suck, dude. I would hate to be in ReZero. That's just suffering. But uh, Konosuba, something chill, something just very casual and have fun, that'd be very fun. What life lessons have I learned from watching anime? I think that growing up watching Battle Shonens like Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach, and Dragon Ball gave me such a strong mindset of, like, never giving up. You may think it's cringe, but quite often these Battle Shonen main characters are very inspirational and give you power to kind of push through when things are hard in life. Due to that, I was never always just down on my luck and saying, Oh no, poor me, wham, being depressed. I was always like, alright, it sucks, but what are you gonna fucking do about it? That's like a good, I don't know, motivation, I guess. If there's a Gauntlet series, I hope you will vote for Agamagami Sister. I don't think that show is even possible due to copyright shit that people are talking about. I'm not really sure exactly what they're talking about. Maybe it's a random people saying, you know, got copyright claims from random channels, but uh... I don't think this show is going to get voted in. There's probably no way. If I woke up tomorrow and found time rewound to my last day of high school and I retain all the memories I lost, what would I do and what would I change? I'd invest in Bitcoin immediately and start a fucking YouTube channel. Yup. Don't go to university. Invest in Bitcoin. And start a fucking anime reaction channel on YouTube. That's what I tell myself. It was the very first anime reaction on my OG channel. The first video ever was a Chainsaw Man trailer reaction. But that's not really an anime I'm watching, right? Tensura was the first reaction that I put on YouTube. And it was also the uh, episode where Milim showed up. Because I think that's kind of where I left off, where I dropped off Tensor watching a long time ago by myself. What's my best advice when starting a YouTube channel? You need to pick one thing, one specific niche, and do not change your niche. The most important thing is understanding how the recommendation system works. If it's a reaction channel, and you're covering so many different weekly seasonal content, that is the worst thing you can do for your channel. That's the fastest way to just kill all sort of growth. Just look at my second channel. Why is it doing so well in terms of average viewership? Because it's only Beyblade. The algorithm is can find the audience easier if you focus on one specific topic. There are some disadvantages to that in the future as you're going to run out of content. You're going to run out of content and you're going to have to figure out what you're going to do after you farm all that one topic. But by then, you will have a community of people that actually enjoy your content for a, 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 a lot. And then you can ask them and make more content, focus content for that specific audience. The way that I handled this main channel is fucking stupid. The fact that it took me this long to get to where I am at 20,000 whatever subs, it's honestly not fast at all. There is much faster trajectory of growth if you know how to optimize the game. And the main mistake people make on YouTube is they pick so many different fucking topics. Some people show for topic A and you try to make topic on topic B. People that sub for A don't care. You have dead subs now. It's sending bad signals to the algorithm. You can't grow like that as fast. Fruits or vegetables? Both, but if I had to pick one or the other, fruits. I'm here for a stream, but I rarely engage in chat. Is it okay with you? Do whatever you want. You can lurk all you want. 
Any anime that I loved, but the end ruined it for you. Pretty much just... I mean, Naruto was kind of like that, right? Most animes just fucking suck in terms of, like, the, uh... What's it called? Conclusions. No one can do a conclusion properly. I remember how fucking bad Naruto ending was. I didn't fucking understand the show. Can't really remember any other animes off the top of, top of my head. How long did I work as a software engineer? Two to three years, I think. And I just got the fuck out. The best main anime character and why? Best main character. Well, you know me. I enjoy the pieces of shits. Not really pieces of shits, but like uh, people like... Like, for example, Failure Frame is a trash anime, but the main character is so compelling. Ari Furuta, Hajime is the same issue, right? There's these character types. Or even like Mob Seka, like Liam Bartfart. I enjoy main characters who are not fucking white knight cucks that are always just talking about their self-righteous indignations, but know how to treat evil with evil and are just so brutally honest about it. Those type of characters I enjoy a lot. Trudeau or Polyvier? Can we have some other fucking choice? I don't know. Right now, obviously, the obvious answer is to go to Polyvier, go PP, just because he's not Trudeau, but I don't think he's really going to solve our problems either, so we're just... Stuck choosing somebody that's promising us good shit, but will he actually deliver? Only one way to find out. Have I seen Avatar The Last Airbender? I have not. There's like, my extent of like stuff like this is just through random fucking memes. Am I considering a regular cosplay? No, I'm not. Windows or Linux? Windows is just, uh, I enjoy Windows. Top three favorite characters of ReZero. I really enjoyed Roswell. And I really fucking enjoyed Betrigus too. So those two are definitely up there. I don't know anymore, but like when I was watching season one and season two, like, oh my god, they were so fucking compelling to me. And then the final. Elsa because of her titties. Have I watched Danmachi Sor Oratoria? No, I haven't, but I probably should. What's my favorite and least favorite anime tropes? It really can... It really... Uh, I think tropes can all be good or bad. It's all depending on the execution. Like, maybe my least favorite is just random cheap fucking fan service where the guy just trips down a stair... You know, a stairway and then just like lands in a girl's titties. My favorite trope? I'm not sure if this can be even considered a trope, but like... Just like, when someone moves really fast, and then the reaction from the sucking other people are like... Oh, oy, oy. Stuff like that's funny to me. What isekai do I believe deserves a season 2? No Game No Life... And Kumo Desuka, So I'm a Spider, So What? How did I get Sir Gregor to be my editor? Sir Gregor is a long time viewer of the channel. He was a community member. There was a time back in January this year when uh, I really started to take streaming seriously by actually reacting live and I realized that I need someone else to be actually editing the content in order to just maximize the output. Sir Gregor volunteered. He showed me a bunch of demos and then we worked something out and here we are. What do I think about Kai Sinat present on campaign? I don't think Kai really understands what the common person in America needs. It's fun, I guess, because big streamer, man, but what the fuck does he know about politics? All due respect. What's my thoughts on Misaka before I moved on to Railgun? BDBD was initially a fucking maniac who is just irrational and annoying bitch based on episode one and a couple episodes after. But now that we understand the mental health of level 5s, what she had to go through, she's kind of more chill now. And now she's gushing and she's being a tsundere, right? Now she's just kind of being a tsundere, you know, cucked girl. She's chill. I like her. 
I think she has good intentions. In the beginning and first impressions was trash though. It just felt like an irrational fucking crazy bitch just trying to kill us for no reason, but it makes sense now. Do I think I'll live in Canada for my whole life? I don't know. Now that um I am able to create content, like the only reason that I'm here right now is because like my job was nearby. If I really wanted to save money, I could just live back with my, you know, back at home. I could move back to Vancouver Island and just live there and not pay rent. But that kind of defeats the purpose of, I don't know, the whole point of making money is that you can do what you want to do with it. But the more I think about it, maybe it'd be smarter to move to some lower cost of living area somewhere in Southeast Asia where I could just, you know, make content and be paid in USD, but be able to, you know, um live within my means and not have to just have crazy bills just be taken care of. But those are problems to really think about 10 years down the road. Right now, I'm just focusing on what I'm doing. If by some miracle, Taro Index were remade by Better Studios and Kate, of course we would watch it. Absolutely. We would definitely check that out. Would I be willing to sample Macross Frontier songs? I don't know what you mean, sample. Are you saying listen to it? Are you saying make reactions of it? Uh, I'm not too into those kind of reactions. You should go ask GOT Games for that. Komoe Sensei or Last Order? Komoe Sensei is just so cute. I think that she has an inherent um, buff compared to other lollies because Komoe Sensei is like 40 something years old and there's a like gap Moe of like Someone that should be like an old adult, but in the body of a lolly. And sometimes she's acting super mature and sometimes she's not. Something about that's even more cute. Favorite content creator? Probably Asmongold. Say what you will about Baldi, right? There's some shit takes here and there, but for the most part... And you'll realize that a lot of my content, you know, is familiar to his like structure. Even like my whole content strategy is based on him. I'm just basically... Asian Asmongold that just watches anime related shit. Which Isekai is my favorite? ReZero easily. But all of these shows are definitely in the top tiers of the, re the Isekai that I enjoy. The Dam Machi mobile game. I... Nah, I'm sorry bro. Like... In terms of content, Dam Machi is not the most yearned for content in my channel. It's ReZero. If there's a ReZero mobile game that we can play without spoilers and people actually wanted it, maybe that would make sense. But mobile game shit, it's not my... Focus. And Damachi is not a priority project even though I love it, so and I can't. What was my first Isekai? I used to watch random episodes of Inuyasha back in the day. I never understood the story because it was random fucking episodes just airing late at night, but that is technically an Isekai, right? Dragon Ball is also an isekai if you think about how, you know, the Saiyans are fucking aliens. I don't know. What was my expectation versus reality during my first week in content creation? During my first week in content creation... The fact that I got 10 views on a video... It shocked me. Shocked as in like, wow, people actually watch these videos of me just yapping about anime. And then, like, when I got, like, 50 views, it was like, holy shit, this is crazy. And now that I think about it relative to what I'm getting now, obviously, it's nothing. But you got to realize, when you're first starting off and you have no idea how things are going to go, even, like, that kind of signal is really cool. And later on, even though the views weren't there, the fact that I had, like, a creative outlet that I could resort to after a days of work and kind of do a stress relief and do something for myself, it gave me a sense of direction and fulfillment that a 9 to 5 could never offer. Honestly, content creation is a source of therapy. Just working a soulless 9 to 5, it eats away at your soul. No matter how much you think that you may have a cause for your job, most people are just working for a fucking paycheck. If you truly do something that, you know, that impacts the world in a positive way and you're proud of your job, you know, that's great, but most people, I think, are just working jobs because they need to fucking pay the bills and they choose something not because they're super into it, but because they're decently good at it and they don't hate it, right? But 
when you do that over and over, you start to really question what your purpose is in life. And then having a creative outlet is a really good way to kind of do a bit of soul searching. So the first week was obviously not good. Honestly, the first two years was not good, right? There was no significant growth until pretty much like last, like, like about like four. The last year has been killer, but the two years before that, it was basically just struggling and failing and just wondering why can't I grow? What is my thoughts about Index? She... She's just low-key abusing Toma now. If she got kidnapped in the most recent episode against Golem Elias without putting up a fight, I would say she fucking sucks. But, instead of just, you know, having a bullshit reason of getting separated from the main pack because the cat's running away, Sphinx, and I'm like, oh boy, Index is going to get kidnapped again. She actually put up a fight. And that was hype. So I'm, I'm really proud of her for that. But um, I'm starting to realize that she's pretty abusive to Toma, bro. The biting is crazy. What's the first anime I watched in my original first Elite channel? Uh, Tensura. Have I heard of Alien Stage? I have not. Anime character that pissed me off the most? Malty from Season 1 Shield Hero. Rachel from Tower of God, right? These kind of characters. Ugh. Do I have an analyst for my anime list? I do not. I'm too lazy for that shit. Room tour when? I would have to hide all my sex toys and I don't want to do that. Worst mistake that I ever made. Worst mistake. Ever? Probably not starting a YouTube channel right out of high school. Probably not starting content creation early enough. Probably thinking that if I just go on the safe route and think all I gotta do is study hard and, you know, be a fucking doctor or an engineer that my life will be solved. Wrong. Your life will not be solved. That's not how it works. That's probably the worst mistake I ever made. And then the best choice I've ever made was taking risks on things that I believed in. My entire life, it's just all about following the safe path. Following what is traditionally safe to get a good education, to get into these good jobs. But once I did that, I realized that like I could have done so much other things with my life. And I see so many other people successful, thriving in their other creative endeavors. And that made me really jealous and wanted me to actually go and pursue that shit too. So worst mistake is probably staying on the safe route. But like that kind of comfort and safety is also very risky. The riskiest thing, and I think this was a line by a famous comedian where he says, the riskiest thing is to be comfortable and stay in the safe route because one day you'll wake up, you know, in a bed with a wife that you might not even like, with kids that you don't fucking like, with a job that you hate because society told you that this was like the safe route to have like a good, like, get a good job, get a good family, just chill. But like that is the most riskiest thing when time is the most important thing and you realize that it's gone now and, and, and you're going to regret not ever fucking taking those risks. When you're young, you should be taking those risks. When you're young and you don't have, you know, responsibilities like, like a wife or a husband or kids, you should take those fucking risks. But it's so hard to do that when you know that like if you go off the tracks of what the proper traditional path is, that if you like, I'm not telling you to drop out of school, right? I'm not telling you to quit your fucking job and do content creation, no. But if you have any of those, if you have any of those like ambitions, you should do it while holding on to a day job. And rather than it feeling like, uh, like another job, it'll feel like you want to do it. You will feel like, you want to do this because this creative endeavor gives you hope at the end of the tunnel, right? So, don't fucking drop out of school, but just think about, like, are you really doing yourself a favor right now? Are you really taking the risks and developing yourself in the different pursuits that you have? Or are you just passively just sitting by, letting life pass by, and just listening to what people tell you is the right thing to do? Something to ponder about. Shangri-La, uh, this is copyright shit, so one day we'll watch it on Patreon exclusives. Music that I enjoy, anime soundtracks. Is it an anime that got copyright striked? Uh, if there is an anime striked, 
yeah, there's no chance. There's, I mean, there is a chance, but like, I'm not going to go through the whole copyright strike appeal to fucking do that for one fucking anime. If I have to rely on one specific anime to go through, that, that's, you're already a fucking failing channel. Best Isekai this year? ReZero. That's pretty much it. Anyways, this is not an investment. Stop it. This Subaru, Subaru always pisses me off. Like, I don't think you guys realize, Subaru pisses me off in every fucking season because he does irrational, impulsive bullshit. And I'm like, fuck, dude, can you chill out for a second rather than fucking screaming and fucking crying and yelling? But if you understand a story, there's a good reason for it. Just because he pisses me off doesn't mean that I don't enjoy him, right? There's, there's time to shit on him and there's time to enjoy him. There's the good and the bad. Without the good, there can't be bad. And without the bad, there can't be good. Right? All right, that's it. Get out of here. That's the end for the Q&A session. Bye-bye.